let me introduce you to uh, the Chukbak 2 converter and uh, now I will only focus on uh, in introducing the most important feature of this converter which is basically uh, that it can do step load change, fast step load change. But maybe first let me show you the circuit. You have the uh, circuit of the Chukbak 2 converter has uh, two switches on input transistors which are uh, operated out of uh, phase uh, in the side, high side drive configuration and uh, on the input side you have a, a resonant capacitor and you have a, a hybrid transformer with its primary and a secondary and uh, you have a diode and on the output uh, uh, secondary delivers current to the load. Uh, you see also here uh, waveforms uh, and uh, the waveforms are simulated using the Plexim uh, simulation program uh, called Plex from Plexim uh, and I showed on the right side of the screen the four channels and uh, on the bottom of that uh, on left side you will see actually measurements on each of the waveforms on the channel. First top channel shows the basically uh, in a yellow the 15 amps DC load current in this case and in the yellow shows uh, actual time domain output current which is measured by this uh, ampermeter. And on the bottom you see in a little green it's basically a drive of these two transistors which shows that the duty ratio as shown on the left hand side is uh, 15 percent and uh, second uh, channel contains a primary current shown in uh, red and the primary current in red as you can see is having zero average so that is an AC current waveform. Secondary is shown in the blue and you can see that the secondary current has a also AC waveform but superimposed to the DC such that it is uh, shown in the blue. Now the interesting part is that the diode current as you can see goes and it's split uh, to the left into primary current and to the right into secondary current. So clearly the diode current is the sum of the primary and secondary current which is shown on uh, uh, first uh, channel as a time domain waveform in uh, red. And you notice what is interesting is that uh, unique feature of this converter is that diode current start at zero during off interval and ends up at zero uh, at, during off interval. In this case during 85 percent of the off time interval the diode current starts at zero and current in zero voltage and stops at zero current at zero voltage and it therefore has zero switching losses. Uh, in fact, uh, I often say that this diode doesn't even know that it's a switch because at the moment when it's turned on and the moment it's turned off it has a zero current so it doesn't know that in between the intervals it's going to have conduct a huge current, maybe 100 amps, maybe 200 amps. But the point is switching loss is eliminated. One other feature I want to show you clearly is that the two voltage waveforms on a, a third channel are two transistors uh, which are in the red and blue which are driven out of phase. And then a, a last bottom channel it shows the voltage waveforms on the two capacitors. The output capacitor shown in the red is a, as you can see from a waveform it is basically 2.4 volts and uh, rounded but the capacitor DC value on a resonant capacitor DC value is a 4.8 volts because it has to be it's twice the DC voltage of the output capacitor and of course this resonant capacitor will have depending on the primary current uh, ripple it have have a, a ripple current at the top of this DC but this is shown in blue that is a sinusoidal like ripple current but it doesn't matter this ripple current can be even very large that means this uh, resonant capacitor can be small in value and still have a very large ripple and not affect uh, output DC voltage and filtering, okay? And uh, one, now I want to show the fundamental feature of this converter. There is now 15 amps uh, on the output and I will now change this 15 amps just to um, say 7.5 amps. 7.5 amps and you know what? 7.5 amps 
So it is half of the DC load current. So you will see now on the top channel that uh, 15 amps will reduce down to 7.5 amps. Yeah, okay. So you see here, when I reduce the, the current from uh, 15 amps to 7.5 amps, you can see the yellow on the top channel, uh, straight DC line, the, the DC current is now 7.5 amps. But notice what's important, that uh, instantaneous current drawn into the output is having superimposed sine wave and the diode current, the diode current is always staring at zero and ending up at zero, which means this converter never goes into discontinuous conduction mode, in a light mode. So it doesn't need regulation. It is automatic and it doesn't uh, cause a change of the voltage gain. So you can run it open loop and even in an open loop uh, you can change suddenly the DC load current because now DC load current dictates what is going to be the current drawn very next instance in time, which is not happening in any other converters. And that is why this converter is the only one which can actually uh, meet requirements of voltage regulator module for a microprocessor, which require 48 volt to 1 volt and 100 amps. You can change 100 amps from 100 amps to 10 amps, and it's fine within a, sub, uh, a fraction of the uh, interval, off time interval, uh, it will settle to the new DC value. There are no s storage in a converter because of this res unique resonance. And of course, the classical way of doing that is not using one converter, but using 12 buck converters, which are put in parallel and phase shifted in order to uh, meet the transient requirement. Worse yet, because they store energy in the DC of the inductors, they have to uh, have uh, uh, energy storage, so they, they actually have uh, uh, 10 or 20 cycles before they can um, go into the steady state, settle in a new steady state, which means that they have to operate at one megahertz or so, such that they have a 10 cycles or one microsecond so they can settle in a 10 microsecond. So you see, uh, and of course that's all these 12 buck converters in a, at 5 megahertz switching is replaced now with a single converter which switches at 100 kilohertz. So which one is better? You, know, you have a 12 bad converters in parallel trying to uh, satisfy demand of a voltage regular module for a microprocessor versus single converter. Now there is even better feature and that is notice this uh, current in a diode. Now if I have two converters and connect them in parallel and phase shift them for half of switching interval, you can see that this sine wave waveform uh, coming from another uh, uh, converter, if it is shifted for half an interval, basically these two sine wave waveforms will add up to zero constant Rip, constant current on the output and eliminate all the ripple. Well, that's a huge benefit compared to the buck converters, which have 12 uh, parallel converters and lots of uh, microfarad to reduce the ripple. Here, that ripple is virtually zero with the uh, insignificant 5-10% of the capacitor used in the other case. So you have all advantages. Now, I just wanted to show you uh, that um, uh, so you can see the uh, how this new technology can uh, eliminate all the problem associated with the, with the conventional uh, buck converter, okay? And um, uh, the, you can see the detailed presentation of this uh, with, uh, in my YouTube video channel, part one and part two, and also I recently put some uh, 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 short five uh, minutes or so summary of uh, this uh, public uh, demonstration and explanation that I made on my YouTube. So you're welcome to join as well. And of course this uh, will be posted as uh, one of the highlights of my uh, upcoming uh, master class uh, starting 25th to 20 through 27 of uh, September that I will be showing uh, the advantages of this converter describing uh, how it operates analytically, showing the simulation, and actually showing why this simulation program is, with my enhancement, ideal for simulating any converter. I will have a number of other converters I'll be simulating and showing using the simulation and explaining it. Thank you very much for your attention, 
and I'm looking forward to any questions you might have, you can post it on my YouTube video or on my LinkedIn uh, post uh, on my Power Electronics Institute group. Thank you very much.